All right, hello everybody, and welcome to a new series I'm going to be doing, where I'm going to be going ahead and showing off the zoos I have made in Zoo Tycoon Complete Collection. Uh, if you've been on the channel for a while, you know that, oh, God, back in 2020, uh, <laughs> been about almost two years, uh, we did a series of live streams on Zoo Tycoon Complete Collection. Uh, it's one of my favorite games from uh, way back in my childhood. It came out, I think, in the year 2000. And it's basically a game where you build a zoo. Pretty simple. Uh, it's really fun, and I've actually been, over the course of the last year and a half, roughly, uh, adding mods to this game a lot more, and playing around with mods. And so I'm going to go ahead and actually show you uh, some of the things I've actually added to this game since, um, and then therefore what I'm going to be doing going forward. So that's why I have this window here, where it's a little bit wider. Uh, <laughs> I don't have it zoomed in on the game. I have it zoomed out so you can go ahead and actually see like all my files and stuff here because I'm going to go ahead and kind of show you the mods I've gotten. And so what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to start off just going ahead and going through some mods here. Um, this is my uh, folder here that I have in my computer for all my mods for Zoo Tycoon. And I have it organized by type. And so, for instance, all my animals are in here. And yes, I have this many <laughs> animals going on. It's crazy. Um, I'm not going to show you all of these uh, right now, just in this file area here. It's, it's a bit boring. Uh, just kind of showing you the sheer scale of the number of mods that I've been downloading. Uh, it's, it's quite extensive. Um, various different kinds of mods. I'm going to be showing you all these in-game here soon enough. So let's see here. That's that's a different mod. Oh, hang on. There's something here I'm just kind of now realizing. I have that. And I have this. I didn't already have these penguins in the game. You can see I did this back in 2021. But these ones... What? I am so confused now. <laughs> I literally just did these today. Why is it dated 2021? He didn't upload these in 2021. He uploaded this penguin pack like four years ago. <laughs> okay, now I'm really confused. Anyway, <laughs> my brain just kind of went on a little ADHD tangent there. Um, several different kinds of mods. So, I mean, animals, different buildings. Uh, let's see, this is endangered species. This is for actually something that was corrupted on my disk at the time. Uh, you can actually download that as well. Uh, fences, different mod fences. And... Hacks, yes, hacks, tons of hacks. Um, various DLL files you might need. Uh, custom maps, scenery items. This one's actually just something I was, te was testing out, and it, it, it works now, which is awesome. I don't need this at all, so I can actually delete that. I don't need that. Bye. Something else I was doing today. So tons of different mods for various different kinds of things. And... If I go ahead and go into my actual proper Zoo Tycoon folder here in my uh, game directory, um, most mods have to be dropped here in this open directory area. So you have like your .ztd files here. Uh, that's what most of the types of files you're going to be downloading are. Uh, for instance, Chinstrap Penguin by Hawkeye is a mod. Uh, so that just got dropped right in here. There are some mods that will specify that you have to put it into either your DL update uh, folder or into your updates folder. Uh, usually there's a readme file that comes with those when you download them, and so you can go ahead and figure out the installation path from there if it's not the standard, just drop in your directory. Uh, so for instance, updates I have, uh, let's see, I'm trying to find, there's a mod in here that I just did. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is it? Oh, um, these aren't ones I just did, but Sloth Bear, Sun Bear, uh, these ones are mods. Um... Trying to think here. Mountain Gorilla is also a mod. This one I literally just did today. I had to drop in here. Balloon Shop. There it is. The Balloon Shop that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and so, yeah, sometimes you'll have ones that specifically say you have to go into a different folder. Uh, you will either have a D update or DL update folder in your directory here, uh, depending on what version of Zootycoon you're running. So if it's an older one, you'll have a D update. If it's the latest one that was available from Microsoft, it'll be DL update. I actually have both because of the way my game had to install. Um, but 
uh, whichever one you have, that's when you need to drop into. If it says you need to put into an either D update or DL update, uh, whichever one you have. Uh, if, you, if you have both like me, put in your DL update. So I have all my mods in here. Uh, these are all, in fact, mods. Um, and so that's more or less how you do that. It's pretty straightforward. The, if, if it's not drop it directly into Zoo Tycoon directory, it'll give you an installation path, either probably two updates or either D update or DL update, depending on what one you, what, which one you have, depending on your version of the game. All right. So got that out of the way. Let's go ahead and go back here. As I said, I have tons of mods here. Uh, one of the first things I actually downloaded, though, was actually, if I go to my desktop, this little program called Zucchini. Now, what Zucchini allows you to go ahead and do is it opens up this window, and it allows you to go ahead and uh, change your zoo.ini file. So the .ini file is a very important file when it comes to games. It often sets a lot of your configurations for your game. So, for instance, I can go to video here and change my screen resolutions uh, to all the various kinds that my monitor can support. Unfortunately, 800 by 600 is the only one that runs on the computer I have. Uh, and so all the other ones are monkeyed up in many ways. Either it just doesn't work at all or it results in everything having the gamma way turned up for some bizarre reason. Uh, various different effects. 800 by 600 is the only one that actually really works. And it, the game was originally designed for 800 by 600, so um, upping the resolution to like, you know, 1280 by 1024, it, you just, it doesn't actually make it look any better because the pixels just get bigger, so it doesn't really matter. Um, you can have it selected to where it opens in windowed or full screen mode. I prefer windowed mode because full screen mode results in everything stretching because everything's widescreen now. It's not uh, your CR um, computer screens like it used to be. Uh, update rate, uh, it's the number of updates per second, so basically the, the higher you put this, the smoother your graphics look. I found that if you went past 15, uh, it made everything look like it was going a bit too fast. It made like um, staff and animals look like it was moving a little too fast. So I prefer 15. And then your FPS, I have it set to 60. Um, pretty easy. You can also change audio, so you can change your volumes. Um, you can have it select where it plays your menu music. Um, and you can actually select menu music. So if you want to change your menu music, you can do that. Um, I prefer not to, but you can change it to whatever you want as long as you have a file on your computer and you set it to that. Uh, it does have to be a .wav file, though. Boot, um, this is basically just um, for setting up resource folders and stuff like that. I don't really use this, uh, but you can use that if you want to use that. Um, you can select where, whether the game plays the, the little intro movies at the start. Um, I have it set to yes because that's just nostalgia for me. Uh, <laughs> and I'm used to just tapping enter twice, and I don't want to have to relearn that. This is the fun stuff, all right, your game settings. So... You can set your maximum guests. Normally, the, def the default is 1,000. I have it set to 10,000, so it can actually have the zoo go up to 10,000 guests. Your starting cash, um, I have it set currently to 1 million. Um, cash increments, when you change in the m menu, when you change your game, and you're changing how much cash you have available, uh, the increments are f by 5,000 when you click up uh, or down. I, I didn't bother changing it. Um, Minimum and maximum cash, again, you can change all those. Uh, the mac default maximum cash is 500000 but I change it to a million. That way it can match my starting cash, and that way every zoo I start starts with a million dollars. Uh, makes it a lot easier when I'm building in the game, because I really kind of... I like the business aspect of it. I can definitely play with that, and I like making things profitable, for sure. But I find that the game is a bit slow sometimes when you're just wanting to go in and build a zoo. There's not really a proper freeform uh, sandbox mode of the game. Uh, and so this allows me to kind of create that by basically giving myself infinite cash, combine that with a hack that uh, does all research right at the start of the game, uh, so that way I don't have to spend all that time doing research. Uh, makes it to where you can basically have a sandbox game. And all I have to do to go ahead and change all that is remove the hack from my files and then change my starting cash down to the default again. And then I can have myself a good challenging game if I want. So it's really, really easy to go ahead and change stuff. You don't have to go into the uh, zoo.any file, which is somewhere in here. Microsoft Games, Zoo Tycoon. Um, yeah, somewhere in here is the zoo.ini file. But that way you don't have to go in there and read all the lines yourself and figure out what things are. This just makes it a really simple tool. Uh, you can just change the values as needed, and it's pretty self-explanatory. And then you can actually go ahead and reset your ini to default if you want to, if you don't like any of these. The last thing you change, you can go ahead and undo. You can save new changes, all that kind of good stuff and that will automatically update your zoo.ini file in your computer. 
Um, I recommend getting this program if you've not gotten it and you're playing this game. Get this. It's so much fun to mess around with things. Uh, it's so great. And then you can just launch the game directly from your uh, from this program. It's, it's really, really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and actually launch the game. And I'm going to show you some of the mods that I've found. So, this is our first little intro movie. You can, again, turn these off uh, in that zucchini program. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and skip this now. <laughs> I'm really excited to get back into this game. I'm really excited. <laughs> so, first thing to note, if I click on Load Saved Game, inside the Save Games is where all those custom maps are. I don't have any of the previous saves that I had that were actually of my zoos. What I went ahead and did is I went ahead and if you go in here to Zoo Tycoon, this goes back to your Zoo Tycoon directory, I actually have another file I created called My Saves. If I click on that, it has all my zoos right there, so it separates the pre-made maps from uh, that I've downloaded online, and it separates the maps I've actually been building with. Uh, and so you can actually go back and forth between these really easily, not a problem. And I've made a few zoos <laughs> since the last time. It's probably about twice as many zoos as when this is the last time we played. I'm going to go through a couple of the old zoos just to kind of show you what the game looks like normally. And then I'm going to show you a bunch of other stuff. Now, if you are curious about where I got these mods from, I do have this pulled up here. There are three sites mainly. This one is Zoo Tycoon Community Download Directory. Uh, this one has a ton of stuff from various different sites. Uh, it gives you the links to them in the posts. Uh, it's really nice. And so you can go, for instance, uh, buildings. And then you have various different types of buildings. I'll, let's, let's say I'm interested in a restaurant. And I like the sound of Shamrock Cafe. Why not? Oh, yeah, that looks pretty cool. It goes to Zoo Admin, which is a, one of the main sites that uh, hosts various mods. And it, it's a link directly to their download. Uh, so this is a really nice resource because it pulls from so many different sites across the community, uh, including old ones that are completely inactive and no one even talks about anymore, so it would be hard to even know they existed. Uh, and so that's, it's a great resource. I really recommend Zoo Tycoon Community Download Directory. That's probably your primary resource because it will then take you elsewhere. The two main sites are Zoo Admin right here, um, this is me already logged in on here, and so you go ahead and create an account free to go ahead and make it, and then you can go ahead and go into buildings and such like that. Um, yes, I want to stay logged in. Thank you. Uh, so, you know, fancy buildings by Yellow Rose, blah, blah, blah. Cool. Fancy stuff. Uh, this is an official building uh, download that was, came from Microsoft um, that you can go ahead and get. I already have it installed. This was already something installed previously when I was playing this game uh, about a year and a half, two years ago. Um, so yeah, Zoo Admin is a great site, a great resource. Uh, I definitely recommend making an account there. The other big one would be Zoo Tech Phoenix. Uh, I would definitely recommend making an account here as well for the same reasons. Uh, they have a lot of cool stuff, so you can go here to downloads. And once that loads, we have tons of stuff here. Um, it even tells you what are new mods, and so I mean, there's new stuff coming out all the time on here. So for instance, Summer Garden. When was this made? Oh, this was made February 15th, so just less than two months ago. Um, so, I mean, there's new stuff coming out all the time. Uh, it's still being made. You know, new mods are still being made for this game, even though it's so old. Um, seasonal hot air balloons. That's interesting. Where do these come out? I didn't see these before. Are these new? Yeah, these are new. Dang. I'm going to have to go and download that one. Uh, <laughs> but I digress. I'll exit out. And so, let's go ahead and get into some zoos here. I'm going to show you just a couple of the old ones that we were messing around with before. Um, so I had made this one. This was a dinosaur-themed zoo. Yes, thank you, game. And so, this one was just, again, all default stuff. And so we have, like, a, a dinosaur cinema right here. We have, you know, a left spondle house. We have various dinosaurs, which the dinosaurs in this game are ridiculous. They are so oversized and... and <laughs> it's it's hilarious, but I love them. Um, so this is a Patasaurus, biggest animal in the game. Stegosaurus, Spinosaurus. Uh, T Rex should be over here. Yeah, T Rex. Look how big that thing is. That's so much larger than a real T Rex. Oh, but yeah. This is all default stuff here uh, that I was building with. 
And uh, it comes out pretty good. It looks really, really nice. Let's go and look at another zoo. So low game. No, I'm not interested in saving. And if you notice, I, when I pulled it up this time, it pulled up to my save. That's the last file I left it on. So I can, so it will pull up, pull up to the previous file you left it on, which is really nice. It doesn't default to a specific file in your directory. Um, Johor Zoo. This is one I built, built kind of based off like Southeast Asia in a lot of ways. Uh, this is a Southeast Asian map. And uh, and so I went and just called it Johor Zoo because Johor is a major city in Malaysia. Uh, <laughs> I just like the name of it. But, again, a lot of cool default stuff. Including over here, actually, this. Uh, putting a rainforest restaurant inside these um, stone observation areas uh, with these walls. It, I kind of try to make it look like a little bit of a ruin. You have to use your imagination a little bit. There are mods that m can make something like this way better. Uh, and I don't have those mods, actually, because uh, the, the aesthetic of it doesn't quite fit the rest of the game. And so I... I I kind of prioritize its aesthetics, but if you want to go ahead and go for that, you can. Uh, just note the aesthetics might be a little bit disjointed. Eventually, I, I accept that I will be downloading everything, uh, and that everything in the game is going to look disjointed. Uh, and then it won't really matter, but for now, anyways, I still kind of care. Um, why do I not have anything there? Why do I have this just empty? Why would I not put, like, a rock garden or something? I don't know. Sneak peek to a, a mod there. <laughs> There's a little mod in that menu. Yeah, this is all kind of default stuff, you know, the wild horses here, uh, crocodiles. So let's go ahead and actually take a look at some mods I've been messing with. So as you can see, I have some that are called Mod Test Zoo. Uh, and so these are zoos I was using to just kind of test mods out. Uh, so these are basically all mods. Uh, I don't have all the mods in these zoos, because they're of limited size, obviously. But uh, everything that's in the zoos pretty much is a mod. So let's just check out this one. So, as you can see, there's some, some stuff that's here that looks a little different. <laughs> so first things I'm going to point out are these uh, Divas mods right here. These are little, little custom shops. They're really nice. The only thing that bothers me a little bit is this text here. It's a little pixelated for my liking. Um, but the rest of it looks pretty good. And it has tons of like little items and stuff like that that people can buy. There are brick-themed buildings, various brick-themed buildings that you can go ahead and put up, including a visitor center, which is nice. That's a cool little addition. Uh, custom restaurants and stuff. Like, for instance, this restaurant here, this is the default restaurant where it's more or less, it's still brick-themed, but the, the, the door is on the left-hand side of the front of the building. This one, it's on the right-hand side. And so you can actually use this um, in tight spaces uh, where maybe you don't have the room to maneuver a path around to the left-hand side. Uh, so now you, there's restaurants here that you can go ahead and do that might work a little better. Uh, and so that's, that's really nice. Add some versatility. Um, let's see here. These are some custom scenery items that you can place down um, that I was messing around with. So, like little archways and statues and stuff. Let's see, I think this is just tuna. Yeah, that's not a mod. But I do have an underwater tunnel as well as these coral rock formations that you can place. These are new rock formations, and then there's, like, tunnel entrances. And so guests can actually enter one spot here and then come out the other end over here. Um, it doesn't quite function the way you think. It's not like an under, underwater pathway where guests would actually literally be walking along here. Uh, instead, they walk in here, and it acts like a building where they stay for a time, but they exit out this one. If you notice, it says plexiglass tunnel entrance parentheses 15. That means that basically with these, how these work is, guests will enter here and then get, and when they exit, they will exit 15 tiles away in the opposite direction that they entered. And so they enter over here, they'll exit out this side over here, 15 tiles away. So you just have to make sure you put your other entrance on that spot. So you do have to do some counting to make it work. Uh, so it's kind of cheesing it, but it is what it is. There's certain limitations with the game. Uh, various different custom fountains. I love these. These are so good. Especially these colored dolphin fountains. I love them. Um, cliffs. You can now place down cliffs. <laughs> various custom archways. Including ones that are uh, able to accommodate two tile-wide paths, which is awesome. Those are, that's one thing that I really disliked about the first game is that it only offered the ability to put one tile paths through archways. But I like having two tile-wide paths in various areas to reduce crowding. Help spread guests around. And so now I have archways that accommodate for that, which is awesome. 
a few custom animals. Uh, Japanese, or sorry, this is actually a harbor seal here. I thought I had Japanese sea lions. There are Japanese sea lions as well that I got. Um, harbor porpoise. Now, in the original game, there was already a harbor porpoise, but it's it wasn't actually a harbor porpoise. It was actually a doll's porpoise, and it was mislabeled. Uh, and so I have a mod that corrects that labeling, and then I also downloaded an actual harbor porpoise. Um, you can make bridges. These are completely functional. As you can see, this guest is walking over it right now. And so, yeah, if I recall correctly how it works, I have to remember how to do it, actually. I haven't done it in, in a while. Uh, if I recall correctly how it works is you actually have to raise the land along here and place the path. And then these are like artifacts that you can put on the side, basically, to make it look like it's a bridge. And there's various different water textures and stuff and various wood textures. So it looks like a bridge, even though it's kind of quasi-not. Again, you have to kind of cheat it. If I recall correctly, that's how that worked. There's a couple different bridge types, and they work different ways. I forget exactly which one I downloaded now that I think about it. Because I haven't done this in a while, like six months. I haven't messed with bridges. Uh, new observation areas. Again, these underwater tunnels. There's even plexiglass bubbles you can put up. And these custom walls here. A uh, different type of tunnel. This one's an under meant to be like an underground tunnel. And I even have a waterfall. Now, the way this fence here works, this, this tall fence here doesn't actually work to contain animals. What you have to use is what's called an invisible fence, which is another mod. Um, and that's why I have along here these little dots are to mark the invisible fence. I can delete them if I want to. If I hover right over the pixel, right there. They are almost completely invisible aside from these little dots. Uh, and animals are completely contained within them. They can't break out of them. And so I'm able to go ahead and put that right there on that top of that waterfall. It's very discreet. And so the crocodiles do not go over the waterfall, which is nice. And there's even this, this sort of covered bridge that I have going over another modded animal, the Aldebar Taurus, which is probably my favorite modded animal that I've found in the game so far. They actually look like they're properly part of the game, which is really nice. They fit the aesthetic perfectly. They have really good animation sets. I, I love them. All the bar tourists are awesome. Multicolored observation canopies, various columns. There are even these annexes uh, that you can place on the sides of uh, shelters. It blends in pretty pretty well uh, with the shelters themselves. And basically, it would be like a thing where guests would go in, see the animals inside their shelter, and leave. Uh, a lot of zoos have these for larger animals in particular. Let me go ahead and go ahead and uh, load another zoo here. Another mod test zoo. <laughs> Thank you, game. So, this is a much smaller one. This is actually a custom map. And so what we have here are more just custom animals. So for instance, I have rock wallabies, American alligators. I have pygmy hippos. I have Crested Gibbons, and quite possibly one of my favorite mods ever made in a video game. Walking trash cans. <laughs> I wish I was joking, but this is actually legit a thing. It is awesome. I love them. Uh, and they are meat eaters because of course they are. <laughs> um, they are actually incredibly dangerous to guests, not going to lie. Uh, they, they live in rainforests, apparently. <laughs> they are hilarious. Right now they're just standing, but they do run around, and their feet are hilarious. They actually just run at breakneck speed all the time. They never just walk. Um, but they just kind of stop and stand for a while, and then they just suddenly start taking off and skittering <laughs> all over the place. Let me just go ahead and delete the fence, just because that'll prompt them to get moving and attack people and stuff. Look at him! Look at him go! <laughs> It's hilarious. And now everybody's just running. So it's based off a lion, so once it starts attacking people, the sprite changes to a lion. Uh, but then it changes back to a trash can. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. These things are so great. 
Yes, Zookeeper, run! Tranquilize the trash can. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. See, th this is the beauty that video games bring to the world. <laughs> this is why we make mods. <laughs> oh, walking trash can. Oh, this is great. Alright, enough of that. <laughs> oh, um, there are, there's another mod I was messing with, so this is aviarytest.zoo. So this is actually the ability to go ahead and create aviaries with these little domes and stuff, and then you just create invisible fences along the outside to actually make them function. Um, so inside this, I actually don't have any birds. Uh, instead, I have anteaters and, uh, I think, yeah, Malayan tapers. And so I made this basically like a little rainforest house instead. And you can go ahead and do these little wood entrance doors and stuff like that, because I have a dividing glass wall along here, so I had a little door, and guests can walk through the doors. Um, they don't open them, but they can walk through them. They're like little openings. As well as all these custom flowers and stuff like that. I think these are hibiscus? No. Lilac. These are lilac. I have hibiscus ones as well. Uh, these are custom planters. So this is me just testing out the aviary and how to build it and stuff like that. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. You have to be like really aware of 3D space with this game in order to build them. And the thing is... Games like Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 were designed with that in mind, where you like build scenery objects on top of each other. This game was not built with that in mind, so figuring out how to place all this stuff <laughs> was a bit of a pain. Um, but it, it, it can work. It can work. I play games where it's worse. <laughs> so I'll, I'll give it a pass. The game wasn't designed for that. The modders did the best they could. At least we have the option. Um, first modded zoo. What's this? Oh, yes, yeah, so this is the first time I was trying to actually attempt a proper zoo with mods instead of just testing the mods. So I have tons of these flowers everywhere um, in this like, little central kind of park area. Uh, very themed area. So there's some animals that are definitely default animals, like the emperor penguin and stuff. Um, I don't know why I went with this bright blue. I think it's just because I really wanted to mess around with the mods. But in here is Arctic foxes, which are a custom animal. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I got one of these little custom fences here blocking this off. Um, and guess and, and staff can still go up it and everything like that, but it makes it to where um, the dirt at the top isn't exposed because there's various different heights you can make for these types of fences, which is nice. Um, I have this little spot here, which is a smaller version of what I did with the um, mod test zoo, where I have an Aldebar, Aldebar tortoise habitat and have this bridge going over it. It's just a smaller scale version of it, basically. I just really like this pink Atlanta archway. It looks really nice. Black marine tanks, which are nice. Baiji, which are a Chinese river dolphin, which is more than likely extinct anymore. But uh, you can definitely place them here. Two wide paths. Oh, love them. And let's see here. Some custom flower beds here. Before when I made Southeast Asian themed areas, I'd often have this little these little rectangles of these fences with uh, purple violet flowers in here, which are default. Uh, but I made it, went ahead and made this one here with some of these jungle planters, which is awesome. I made this long bridge over the Af African elephants. And again, these types of bridges again have the same thing as those tunnels where you have to place it like 15 units away. So you have to keep track of things uh, and try and make it work. Otherwise it kind of gets monkeyed up and it doesn't work well. I'm going to have made a custom food court. Um, decorative brick bench. Um, I mean, these are benches, obviously, but they don't really function, which is one thing that kind of bothers me. I wish they were functional, but they look good anyway, so. Anities. Ah, here's my Japanese sea lions. Really, the only difference is they're a little more brown, kind of golden color versus the California ones, which are more gray, but, I mean, hey. They're a thing. And then I really like this that I made. Um, an underwater restaurant entrance, actually. So this functions as a restaurant, um, but you can make it look like a tunnel. So it looks like a tunnel, but it functions as a restaurant so people can actually get food and stuff, which is nice. Um, and it just kind of goes through this whole habitat. And so, yeah, it, it, it's really nice. It's really nice. <laughs> I like it. Um, there are a few hacks I have installed. Like, for instance, I have one that makes... Uh, Shows here, for instance, I have set to infrequent. 
Um, even with shows being infrequent before, uh, they would often still happen with a little too much frequency and animals would get hungry because they'd be spending too much time in the show and not enough time in their exhibit eating. I have a hack install that makes it to where uh, the difference between frequent and infrequent is even bigger. And so that helps with it. So they're not constantly like starving. Because that is one thing. The base game, the shows are just a little bit broken. You, you have to set it to infrequent or else your animals are just going to die. Um, so it's, it's a little bit borked, a little bit broken. I've not finished it. I still have to finish this middle area here. I've not finished the zoo. Let's see. Load game. No. What other stuff have I done? I don't know if I've done a whole lot else with modded stuff. I have micro parts zoo. Ah, yes. So. I forgot all about me doing this. So. <laughs> this is a custom map. It's a small one. I really like small maps because they challenge you to be really space efficient. But I went ahead and did this stupid thing where there's just tons of these little restaurants because I realized that these restaurants function as restaurants but they take up less space than actual restaurants. So again, spatial efficiency. Uh, and so I have just tons of them all over the place. Um, now, I have some areas because obviously putting all three of these restaurants right here next to each other, it'd be way too dense and they'd all run into debt. So I went ahead and made some of these just tunnel entrances. But yeah, <laughs> Even this little tiny one, just randomly on this two path here, and both these are restaurants. As, yeah, it, it's just it, it's it's a bit ridiculous. <laughs> it's a bit ridiculous. They all make money though. Uh, Five thousand, six thousand. What are making on average? So uh, on a, on a per month period, it's making five hundred ninety six, five forty one, three thousand one forty six. So actual restaurants still make more money. So money efficiency, I think you'd still be better off with regular restaurants. But um. This led to an idea, which I called Efficiency Zoo Version 1. So, <laughs> with this, all my restaurants <laughs> are these underwater restaurants. And I went ahead and packed it as much as I could. Because I wanted to make the zoo as attractive to guests as possible to get as many guests in here as possible and these restaurants obviously service guests so there's a certain limit to the, what they can hold so the more of them I can put down the better and making it as dense as possible the better uh, and so I have 1200 guests in here <laughs> in this tiny tiny zoo which is higher than the maximum that you can have in the default game again the default you max out at 1000 and I have tons of little custom animals. So I have um, some rock wallabies right here. Love rock wallabies. I have the Aldebar tortoises again. Uh, I have some default animals like the Komodo dragon. Um, let's see, what else do I have in here? What's, what's in here? These are Okapi. Okay. So most of them are default animals, but I do have a couple custom ones. What's in here? Where's my entrance for this? Rhinos. Okay, so these are Java and Rhinos. Yeah, job and rhinos. So those are default. Um, a few custom planters and stuff. It's a really good idea to place like um, flowers and stuff next to compost stations because it'll help freshen up the air so guests don't vomit as much. Because that does bring down their happiness, brings down your zoo rating, all that good stuff. So, yeah, I was trying to be as spatially efficient as I could possibly be with this zoo. I think it worked pretty well. I mean, I think there are ways I can make this a bit better, but, you know, I mean, I still have some other shops and stuff here that I don't necessarily need. But I was wanting to go with two wide paths around most of the zoo um, just to accommodate the guests better. Um, and there's a few areas where I have three wide, and so that way I could plate the restaurants and stuff in the middle of these. And so I made sure to go ahead and put these on the outside edges and the center path here. Um, I found that guests around in these areas were still needing some food, and so that's why I put down some of these little stands, because it wasn't areas big enough where I could put down things like this. But, uh, yeah, it worked pretty well, in my, in my opinion. <laughs> God, the mods look so nice. Like, they actually just blend right in. They blend right in. It's great. Do I have anything else to show? Um, I 
think the rest was test zoo. Okay, yeah, this is all default stuff. This is an older one. Still looks good. Looks really good, actually. I really like this area. I've always liked the, the Lala Palms. Like, place them around in a, a central kind of garden area. They have a really nice look to them. They're, the leaves are so feathery. But, uh, yeah, that's really about all I've got. I'm going to be going ahead and making more zoos and showing you guys these zoos, just kind of giving them tours. I just kind of want to show off the mods and stuff, what I've gotten so far. Um, yeah, that's really about all I've got. So thank you for watching. Have yourselves a great day, and uh, make sure to check the description below for all socials.